Hello, precious family. We have a very special gift that we want to share with you today. The gift Our Lady gave us in Lourdes, the shrine of Our Lady of Lourdes in France. If there were one word we would want to give you or one sentence, it would be, I am the Immaculate Conception. For me, the big word here is love. Our Lady has set a table before us and it is just filled with so much love. It's our first night here and we're looking around at all the love that our mother has been able to pour forth and it's coming out of each of these people. The volunteers as they, they so willingly take care of the sick and, and it, the different ages from the tiniest little people to the oldest they're so beautiful. We see a lot of youth. We're so happy about it. You know, we, we may talk about this a lot, but at many of the shrines that we've been visiting, film, uh, taping this documentary, we have seen a lot of youth working for Our Lady. A priest today at Mass called them Children of Mary. It was such an exciting thing to hear, Children of Mary, and that's what we've got here. They say that there are not that many practicing Catholics in France. Well, I gotta tell you, they are all here. Every one of them must be here at the Shrine of Our Lady in Lourdes because it is just packed with people in love with Our Lady. I think another title I would give Our Lady of Lourdes is Our Lady of Faith. You see the faith that people have here. They come believing and none of them leaves disappointed. I have to be in awe as I look at my brothers and sisters in Christ, all of them speaking different languages with different colors and different costumes and different customs. They all believe in the power of Our Lady's intercession with her son Jesus. Miracles happen at Lourdes. I have seen miracles here. You will see miracles in this time that we're here together. Nobody comes here and leaves the same. Everybody experiences change. Conversion comes about here in Lourdes. I want you to come with us now as we share the story of Our Lady's apparition here to a little girl named Bernadette in the year 1858. It's an exciting time. Come with us. As Our Lord unfolds, the ongoing story of faith, the ongoing yes of his mother, of a little girl named Bernadette, and all these brothers and sisters here who have come believing that the Lord hears and answers their prayers. Our Lady of Lords, we're so excited to be here. We love you so much. We have to go back to the beginning, to that cold winter day in February 1858, when Our Lady blessed this hamlet with her presence. That particular day of 1858 was bitter, especially for the Subaru family. Their life had been difficult for many years. The father, Francois, was a good old boy. He had a great need for acceptance. When he went down to the local cafe, he had to buy drinks for everyone. When people bought flour from his mill, he extended them credit and they didn't pay their bills. Eventually, he ran out of money and his creditors closed him down. He lost his business and the mill and the family was out in the street. Into this setting, we bring Bernadette Subaru, an illiterate, extremely unhealthy little 14-year-old girl. She was a good girl, a holy girl, a humble girl. For someone as famous as she became, she had no exaggerated impression of her self-worth. The family was forced to move into a former prison called the cachot, the cell, or the lockup. The reason it was no longer used as a prison was because it was considered below human living standard. Into this hovel, Francois and Louise Subaru moved their little family of four children. 
They lived here from 1857 until the end of 1858, just at the time when the apparitions took place, right after the year after the apparitions they left here. The family were bankrupt when they left the Bowling Mill where she was born, although they had lived there comfortably until 1855. Then they went down deeper and deeper into misery, continually moving from one place to another. When they arrived here, they were going through the most painful time they had ever experienced. There were six of them, I'm sorry. Six, Francois and Louise, the mother and father, and the four children, Bernadette, the oldest, Toinette, Jean-Marie, and Justine, all in this room. There was a table, a few chairs, a trunk, where the linen was kept, two beds, one on the right as you enter, and the other on, on the same side, but near the fireplace. And this was where they cooked. In this utter poverty, the Subaru bore the hardships together. Their mutual love united and strengthened the family. As I said, the, the cousin who lived upstairs, André Saiju, bore testimony that there was never a dispute, no arguments between the parents or between the parents and the children. In the evening, they prayed together. And on the 11th of February, it had just rained. The weather was miserable. It was cloudy. It was very cold. There had been a snow, uh, snowstorm about two weeks before. Bernadette left this room went down to the grotto of Massabiel to pick up dry sticks for the fireplace because they could not afford wood. And that's where Our Lady appeared to her and she would never be the same. Now scientifically they tell us, and they've done experiments with rats, you know. You put people, they would take rats and they, they put them in tighter, 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 closer uh, quarters and they will eventually kill one another. And yet this family of six came into an uninhabitable area, an area that was not fit for the worst criminals under the worst conditions, and they loved one another. I just want to give you one other thought, and then we'll leave. Those of us who live in California and Texas in the warm climates, the outside is our living room. We can always go outside, the extended home. This was it. And here it snows like this. And when it gets cold, it's damp, it's cold, and it's hard to get out. Remember, so, this is the Pyrenees Mountains. So here they mountains. are, in this damp, dank. They eat here, they sleep here. But the most important thing, they prayed here. On January 7th, 1858, Bernadette turned 14 years old. On January 28th, she returned to Lourdes from Batre. On February 11th, two weeks to the day later, she went off with her sister and a friend to pick up dried twigs at the Grotto of Massabiel. The Bernadette who walked out the door of the jail that day would never return. She was to be touched by the lady. She would never be the same. Bernadette and her sister Toinette frolicked through the town, picking up a playmate, Jean Abadie, on the way. They passed through the old fort and then went down towards the center of town. The chore was to pick up firewood wherever they could find it. The little girls wound their way through the town, then down the hill in the direction of the river Gav. They approached the river. They saw a cave on the other side. It was the grotto of Massabiel, a garbage dump. But it was dry inside. They could see twigs and sticks on the ground. Bernadette hesitated to cross the river for fear she would catch cold. But then the other girls chided her. She took off her stockings and began to wade across the water. At the same time, a streak of light flashed through the sky. We don't know if the other children saw it, but as Bernadette walked out of the water, she was thrown to her knees by an unknown force. Before her was a brilliance that was indescribable, dazzling. Yet there was a softness, a warmth, a shimmering, but oh, so much more. Bernadette looked to an alcove to the right of the grotto. She was speechless. There must have been a choir of angels reaching as high a pitch as the eyes of Bernadette and the lady met. An electric beam riveted the gaze of the two together. Bernadette could feel her heart swelling. She was afraid it was going to burst. She couldn't breathe. She trembled, but her fear turned into excitement, wonderment. She couldn't take her eyes off the lady. It had begun. The Queen of Heaven had come down to speak to her people. God had put aside the laws of nature and created miracle. This was the beginning of 18 apparitions that Our Lady made to Bernadette in the year 1858. 
There were many messages of great importance Our Lady gave us through Bernadette and many messages for Bernadette herself. The most meaningful message for Bernadette came on the third apparition, actually the first time Our Lady spoke to her when she asked her, would you have the grace to come here every day for two weeks? And then she said to her, I do not promise to make you happy in this world, but in the next. For us, the people of God, perhaps the most important apparition was the one which took place on Thursday, February 25th. It was at that time that Our Lady said, penance, penance, penance. She kept repeating penance to the people. Then she said to Bernadette, go and drink at the fountain and wash yourself. Go and eat the grass which is there. Kiss the ground in penance for sinners. Well, Bernadette didn't know what she was talking about. She kept looking around the grotto for a spring to drink water from. At first, she thought the lady meant the mill stream, and then she went running towards it. Our lady said, no, that's not it. Then Bernadette headed for the river Gav. Our lady said, no, that's not it. Bernadette whirled around in the grotto. She was confused. Then our lady repeated the request and, and then said, Go and eat grass, which is yonder. Bernadette went over to a clump of grass that was in the grotto. She picked it up and began to chew it. It tasted bitter, but it was okay. She was doing what the lady wanted. And then she looked for water, and she couldn't find a spring anywhere. She saw a wet spot on the ground. She went over to it, and she thought it was probably the remainder of a flood that had been there. She started digging and digging. She finally came up with a little bit of water and she washed her face in the water. It was mud. She was washing her face in mud. And then she dug some more, like a little squirrel. And finally she got enough water to cup in her hands and she tried to drink it. But it mixed with the mud and she choked on the mud and the water and she threw it up. Her mother was angry and the people thought Bernadette had lost her mind. The mother took her away angrily, but as she left, everyone's attention was focused on Bernadette. Nobody noticed the little pool that was forming from where Bernadette had dug. And that pool began to trickle and grow and grow and grow, and from a pond it became the miraculous baths that we go to today. The baths that have been running since 1858 continuously and show no sign of letting up. This was our gift, the gift Our Lady has given to us, the gift of healing, the gift of hope, the gift of miracle, and we see it every time we come to Lourdes. Every time someone goes into the baths, you know that miracle is going to take place. Our Lady gave us a second very important gift here, and the gift was for the church, and the gift was for the Pope, and the gift was for the priesthood, and that gift was an affirmation of the doctrine of the Immaculate Conception. On Tuesday, March 25th, the Feast of the Annunciation, actually three weeks after the official apparitions ended, Bernadette woke up like a shot in the middle of the night. She knew Our Lady was calling her to the grotto, and so she went down immediately. When she got there, Our Lady was waiting for her. She went into her special spot, knelt down, and began to pray and talk to the lady. Her parish priest had asked her to ask Our Lady who she was, what was her identity. She asked Our Lady over the period of the apparitions, but Our Lady would just smile. This time she asked again. Three times she asked the lady who she was, and three times Our Lady smiled. And then on the fourth time, in Bernadette's own words, Akero, the dear one, drew apart her clasped hands and let both her arms hang down. Then she put her hands together again at the level of her breast, lifted her eyes towards heaven and said, I am the Immaculate Conception. The cycle was completed. A miracle that had occurred before the beginning of time, the Immaculate Conception of Mary, passed down through the years as tradition, proclaimed on earth by Pope Pius IX in 1854, was confirmed by heaven in 1858 in this little grotto, nestled deep in the Pyrenees, in a hamlet of no consequences, to this chosen saint 
who had no idea what the words of the lady meant. One of the greatest gifts we believe that we have been given by Our Lady and that we give back to Our Lady is the gift of the candlelight procession. Hundreds of thousands of people from all over the world, sick people, people that are well, go to Lourdes every year and take part in the sign of faith, the sign of hope, the sign of love to Our Lady, the candlelight procession. And they say so plainly, there is only one God and we believe in you. We trust in you, Jesus, and we trust that you will li listen to that beautiful lady, that lady who was immaculately conceived, that lady through whom you came to the earth, that we would someday be resurrected. That is the message here, the message of hope, of faith, and of tremendous love and charity to one another. We would consider this one of the great miracles of the world, the sign, this witnessing, this testimony that we give to our Lord Jesus through his mother Mary here at the candlelight procession every day during the summertime as it takes place here in Lourdes. Lourdes has become one of the most dynamic shrines to Our Lady in the world. The people have taken seriously the words she has said to Bernadette, go and wash in the spring. Have people come here in procession. Since the beginning, after Bernadette had the apparitions, people started to wash in the baths. Miracles took place almost immediately. They continue to wash in the baths until this very day. These are the baths. They say this is the most humbling experience. And I guess it is to find yourself stripped of clothes, of all your exterior shell, to allow people to help you to go into ice cold water. And why do they come by the hundreds of thousands? Why was that one of the most important things that I have done at Lourdes? I cannot explain it. But there is healing that comes through the intercession of Jesus' mother in these baths. I was shouting before that when people come in here, Hundreds of thousands, well, thousands of people every day will have come through here. And the water is only changed twice a day. And at the end of each day, they take a half a cup of water and they drink it as a sign of faith. Nobody has ever gotten sick here at the Baths of Lourdes. There are no, there's no bacteria. There's no reason why there have been so many miraculous healings through this water. But healings come about. No one enters the water of Masabiel and leaves the same. Whether it be a physical, an emotional, a spiritual healing, no one leaves the same. Praise God. You know, I just want to mention, when you come down, you come past this curtain, you, you undress here. Okay? You undress here. No one looks at anyone. These volunteers come and help you undress. And then after you come out of the baths, they help you to dress. Then you go past this curtain. This curtain is closed. Only one person goes in here, yourself. And there are aides here from every country to help you. They ask you what nationality you are and then they help you to pray. 
You make the sign of the cross, and then the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And then you pray either the Lord's Prayer, Hail Mary, Glory Be, Confess, and then they help you, they hold your arm, and they help you descend the steps. Those who walk through the doors of these baths are children of Mary, truly children of Mary. Men and women become brothers and sisters under the banner of Our Lady, and she protects them, and she guides them, and she heals them as they follow her command, come and wash in the spring. Mary said, let the people come in procession, and they came. The first 50 years, the cures and miracles were attributed mainly to immersion into the miraculous baths. But our lady's plan was not finished. When organized pilgrimages began to go to Lourdes, a custom was initiated called the procession of the blessing of the sick. The procession began at the grotto, went all the way around the grounds, down to the front of the Basilica of the Rosary. The sick were lined up in front of the Basilica. The very last person in the procession was Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. As the celebrant faced the people and raised the King of the World in the monstrance, cries could be heard out from various parts of the shrines. Litters pushed through the crowds, moving very quickly to the hospital. Miracles had occurred. Those of us who have a great devotion to and faith in the power of the Eucharist call these miracles the miracles of the Eucharist of Lourdes. Today, the people at the shrine attribute half the cures to the miraculous baths and half to the miracle of the Eucharist in the procession of the sick. There are special places in Lourdes for each pilgrim who goes there. Many spend most of their time at the grotto praying. Others will go to the Blessed Sacrament Chapel just below the Basilica of the Immaculate Conception. Our Lord Jesus is always there in the Blessed Sacrament, loving, helping, healing. Many will go to the Basilica of the Rosary where there are 15 individual chapels, one for each of the mysteries of the Rosary. Others spend their time walking the way of the cross, a two-mile uphill hike, praising our Lord Jesus for suffering and dying for us. Mary is alive and well and living in Lourdes. It remains to this day one of the major shrines of the world. Lourdes is a place of great hope, of great joy. It is a celebration of the Immaculate Conception of Mary. Bernadette could see the beginning of the pilgrimages starting when she was still there. She knew that she must decrease while the message of Jesus through Mary increased. She also knew that the only way this could happen was to sacrifice her beloved Grotto of Massabiel. St. Bernadette left Lourdes in 1866 for the convent of St. Gildard, some 600 miles to the north. Mary's prediction to Bernadette followed her all her life. I cannot promise you happiness in this world, but in the next. Victor Hugo, a French novelist and playwright of the 19th century, summed it up well. He said, Our Lady asked Bernadette to eat bitter herbs and drink muddy water, and this was to be the pattern of her life. She bore it well, not only during the time of the apparitions, but also for the 13 years she spent in the convent of St. Gildard. Bernadette's illness became worse during her years in Nevers. Many of her sister nuns suggested she go to the baths at Lourdes. Bernadette's reply was, I have made the sacrifice of never seeing Lourdes again. I have only one ambition, that of seeing the Blessed Virgin Mary glorified and loved. Bernadette died in 1879 in Nevers, France. In 1909, 30 years after Bernadette died, upon investigating, and it was not only the members of the church, which are the strictest, civil and religious authorities, observed that the body was completely intact. On 18th of April, 1925, the body of Bernadette was transferred to the chapel of St. Helen, where we're going to go inside the convent. And since the 3rd of August, 1925, it rests in the chapel. It's, and it's in a glass case, and you'll see the body. The body is more beautiful so in death 
than she was alive. Remember, there is a wax covering over the face and the hands, but her body is just beautiful. Bernadette, you became little so that the message of Our Lady would become large, and it has grown and grown and grown. We really believe that Our Lady never left to Lourdes. Bernadette left. She went 600 miles to the north to a place called Nevers. Our Lady has never left this place. She is very strong here. She is very, very alive in the people here. There's a tremendous amount of hope, a tremendous amount of joy for all the pilgrims that come here to venerate and to speak to their mother Mary here at her shrine in Lourdes. You know, when I leave Lourdes and I go home, I very often, especially during Mass, am transported to a moment in Lourdes, to a place in Lourdes. I pray, my brothers and sisters, our most beloved family, that you will remember this time we have spent together in Lourdes and you will be transported in time and place and be once again with your mother, our mother, and her son, our Lord. We thank you for spending this time with us. We pray that Our Lady has touched you in this place in the same way that she has touched us. God bless you. And we thank you and our Lord Jesus for another day to serve you. Write us at the address on our screen or call us in the United States at 1-800-633-2484. We love you.